evening on Monday Night Special. Ricky Williams and Texas Tech take on high-scored Arizona State. You got all that? Don't leave the couch. Teach the dog to walk himself. It's time to watch the big skin for live. Next, Heisman Kennedy Joe Hamilton, the most exciting player in college football, meets the Ramblin' Rex from Georgia Tech into battle against the midshipmen of me. These young men like the pound of football. Georgia Tech and Navy, sound the alarm. The college football action is upon us, men. In this book, the best never rest. Let's get it on! Stadium in Annapolis, Maryland, one of college football's most picturesque settings and the site of today's clash between Georgia Tech and the middies of Navy. And one man who hopes to sink the Navy, Heisman hopeful and Yellow Jackets QB, Joe Hamilton, who has revenge on his mind. Three years ago, the middies marched through Atlanta and knocked off Tech. Hello and welcome to another super season of College Football Saturday here on Fox Sports Net. Kevin Frazier in the newly refurbished College Football Saturday studios. And as always, I am joined by my partner, the Hall of Famer, Kelly. And Winslow, he is already in mid-season form, folks. I tell you, Kevin, college football is finally here on the net, and I'm excited about what's going to happen. This year plans to be better than last year, but I want the fans to stay tuned later today on our college football special preview. I'm going to highlight my top five in college football. I think you'll be surprised at my selection. And he will always tell you that the tight end is always open. All right, let's get right down to business. Tenth-ranked Georgia Tech rolls into Annapolis, looking to avenge the upset of three years ago and what their quarterback, Joe Hamilton, called the lowest point point in his career. It was the lowest point in his career because Mr. Excitement Joe Hamilton, he's got a good arm. He's got great leadership ability. But what makes this young man special, Kevin, is his ability to make a big play out of a bad play. Get out of the pocket. Use that athletic ability. He's got to make big plays like that all year long if he has a legitimate shot at the Heisman Trophy, and I believe he does. Navy, on the other hand, they've got to take care of the football, no turnovers, and they've got to play aggressive defense to have any shot at beating Georgia Tech today. All right, Kellen, we'll keep you to your word. Joe Hamilton, Heisman candidate. Remember, we're talking about a Georgia Tech team that won 10 games last year and beat Notre Dame on New Year's Day, so expectations are very high for very this high. team. Expectation also high here on the net. Plenty on our plate today at 6.30 Eastern. It's our College Football Saturday special preview. We'll break down the race for the national championship. Then it's off to Denver, where at 7 Eastern, a new era begins at Colorado as new head coach Gary Barnett leads the Buffaloes against rival Colorado State. And, of course, Kellen and I will be here throughout the day to keep you updated on all of the college football happenings from across the nation with game breaks in the Nissan Halftime Report. But right now, let's get you out to the guys who are calling today's game in Annapolis. Paul Kennedy and Tom Ramsey and gentlemen besides the Navy wishbone. There's another obstacle that Tech will have to deal with this afternoon. Absolutely, and it deals with their uh, head coach uh, in George O'Leary, who is coaching today a, a top ten football team. Well, we're going to know if they're a top ten football team early on. They go on the road the first two weeks, of course, here at Navy today, next week in Tallahassee. For George O'Leary, what has been termed a secondary NCAA violation has landed him, if not in the doghouse, in the press box. He cannot coach on the sidelines this afternoon. Rather, he's upstairs. Well, I know it's made seven of his coaches real happy. Those are the seven coaches that are on the field today. The guys up in the box, it will, we'll know later today. Well, when it comes to a play calling, pretty straightforward for O'Leary and the nationally ranked Yellow Jackets. That is, give the ball to Hamilton and have him throw it to the electrifying Dez White. Des White, of course, the co-MVP of that Toyota Gator, Gator Bowl a year ago. Des White, 46 catches, almost 1,000 yards last year. It's going to create some mismatches for that Navy defense. Look for Hamilton to go to Des White often today. So if you're Charlie Weatherby and underman Navy today, the underdog in this game, the best defense against Tech's offense is to run your option, control the football. He has a quality quarterback in Brian Broadwater to run the option attack. Well, they really look to Broadwater to really the master at the control of that big Navy ship, and he has to distribute the ball all throughout that offense, but he becomes a very key, integral part of this Navy offense, and of course, Mike Bott, the offensive coordinator. All right, the pride and tradition of Annapolis on display today against the 10th-ranked Yellow Jackets, and our kickoff next, live from Navy on Fox Sports Net. All 
always exciting. Opening day on a brand new season of college football on Fox Sports Net. Georgia Tech in Annapolis. That means the Atlantic Coast Conference Coach of the Year in George O'Leary. From high atop his perch in the press box, he says, for the first time since 1988, he can hardly stand it. Doesn't like it up there. Charlie Weatherby is just as glad he is up there. Here is Charlie Weatherby facing a very rugged schedule. Six of his opponents this year that will face the midshipmen went to bowl games a year ago. Navy, the blue and gold, has its work cut out. And Tim Schubster, after Navy had won the toss and elected to defer, the senior from Sash, Texas will put the ball on the tee at the 35-yard line. He'll be kicking to quite a tandem for Georgia Tech. Did you see shoots to there. Des White, who returns kicks as well as a does it all for the Yellow Jackets. And an electrifying wide receiver to the left of your picture and to the near side, Joe Burns wearing number 35. There is a spray in the air and the wind gusting to Shoopsta's back at close to 15 miles per hour. Hurricane Dennis may have been downgraded to a tropical storm, but he's still feisty. The, the outer edges are blowing through the Chesapeake Bay. I feel at times it's blowing through our box here as well. It, uh, it's interesting. I, if I was Navy right off the bat, I think I'd keep the ball away from number 22, Des White. The last time Georgia Tech was here in 1996, Navy won. In fact, the Yellow Jackets have not beaten the midshipmen in 20 seasons. Is there a hex? Here is Tech and Navy, and we are underway on Fox Sports Net from Navy Marine Corps Stadium. This will be White, a yard deep. To the 20 and still on his feet. At the 25 now in running room. Across the 40, drawn down from behind by Shoops to the kicker, just shy of the 45-yard line. And here comes Joe Hamilton, the four-year starter. The senior from Alvin, South Carolina. You see his numbers from a year ago when he led Tech to one of its greatest seasons in 20 years. Culminating with that New Year's Day win in Jacksonville, in the Gator Bowl over Notre Dame. He faces a 3-4 look on the part of the midshipman. On first down, straight ahead running. And out across the 45 to the 47-yard line, toting the ball, the 255-pound Ed Wilder running behind this very solid offensive line. The strength of the Yellow Jacket team may be its offensive line, and John Carmen anchors it on the right side at 200, or rather 325 pounds. He is huge, number 74. On the option, the pitch again, and a first down. Philip Rogers, now the senior from East Point, Georgia now, who will team with Wilder in that backfield, carries it to the 45. Two big running backs, Rogers at 230, Wilder at 255, and there is the huge John Carmen, the only Maryland native on this Georgia Tech team. And in the backfield, with Hamilton, Des White, the junior, and who, a man who shared co-MVP honors in that win over Notre Dame in the Gator Bowl, along with those other skilled players. Opening possession for the Yellow Jackets. Hamilton on the corner. Gets to the 44-yard line. Rashad Jones comes up to meet him. Brad Wimsott, the junior, left in. Anchors the three-man front. David Rhino, Gino Marchetti, a distant relation to a Hall of Famer. There's Ryan Hamilton in the middle, one of the best ever, and he is young here. And Jamie Doffelmeyer, if you think football is tough, check him out in lacrosse. A two-sport standout for the midshipmen. First pass for Hamilton, right on the money. And White is down to the 30-yard line. We will see this combination a lot, both all ACC performers in White the junior and Hamilton the senior. Boy, just an easy throw and catch, too. There's no reason why you can't understand why Joe Hamilton is number two on virtually every one of Georgia Tech's all-time passing records, and Hamilton will probably surpass all of them this year if he has anything close to the years he's put together in the previous three. 
Conrad Andrzejewski, the tight end, shifts to the far side. Hamilton again, flares it out of the backfield, was uh, seeing some heat. Not a lot of running room in the flat this time for Philip Rogers. Maybe uh, bringing some, uh, bringing a blitz there, and Rogers takes the pass from a hurried Hamilton. Well, the defensive coordinator for Navy, Tim DeRoyter, he knows he has to put pressure onto Hamilton, and right there, just a quick little swing pass out to the back, but Navy does such a great job that time of pursuit. They finally hold Georgia Tech for no game. 2,100 yards, 17 touchdowns, better than 2-1 to one against his interception. Makes very few mistakes to the short side. Joe Hamilton is not the largest quarterback you will see. As Gino Marchetti stops him there. Just 5'10", maybe, and 185 pounds. And, and one of the most remarkable things about Joe Hamilton, he's a big game player. He knows how to play. When you say, hey, they went out and beat Notre Dame, they just didn't beat Notre Dame during the regular season. They beat him on New Year's Day, big-time bowl game, and he knows how to rise up to the occasion, and that Georgia Tech looks to him, the little big man for leadership. The seventh play of this opening possession, an important one on third down. Hamilton clutch and the slant finds Des White at the 15-yard line. Hamilton waited for White to get open and fires the strike. It nets him a dozen. He showed great patience that time. And George O'Leary, speaking with Coach O'Leary yesterday, I said, what does it mean to have Hamilton back there as a senior quarterback? And, you know, you really just can't put enough emphasis on it, but he stood in the pocket nice, patient, delivered the first down. Two tight ends. And the single setback and Philip Rogers, the senior. Rogers off the right side with blocking. Rogers inside the five. Down to the two. Great work up front by Georgia Tech's interior line. Mike McGee, the junior linebacker, on the touchdown saving tackle. Well, take a look. They're running right off the big offensive tackle. He's going to come down and just mow. Boy, the left side of that line, he just creates a huge hole that time for Rodgers, and he's up into the gap. And set back. No indication yet that uh, Rodgers got in. George O'Leary's very first visit when he became the Georgia Tech head coach five years ago was to the home of Philip Rogers. So that's right away the man I'm going to identify as my first recruit. And five years later, they're making music together. This time, strike up the band. Touchdown. Georgia Tech on its opening possession. Philip Rogers caps the drive. Ten plays right at Navy. Well, I think one of the questions you have to ask, Navy wins the toss, they defer to Georgia Tech. You'd almost want to take the ball on offense to control the clock and come out of the gate. They elect to defer, Georgia Tech goes down for the score. Guy Cartwell to add the extra point, which the junior does. Georgia Tech, right tenth in the nation. Hangs the first touchdown of the season on the board by the senior Philip Rogers. We are underway from Annapolis on Fox Sports Net. College Football Saturday on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by the all-new 2000 Buick LeSabre by Buick. Re-engineered to be safer than ever. On the banks of the Severn. 41st season of Navy Academy football here at Navy Marine Corps Stadium. As Georgia Tech has taken the opening kickoff and driven the length of the field, Philip Newman is set to a kickoff to the midshipman. Philip Rogers from a yard out. All set up, too, by Des White. Down on the opening kickoff. Des White comes all purpose yards. He might have had more yards than the entire drive itself. Sure did. He had... Uh, 44 on the uh, kickoff return and a couple of receptions for better than 20. His junior year is off to a great start. Navy set to a field of football for the first time today. <laughs> they can keep the ball on the tee. That's an indication of how the wind is gusting around today. Yeah, it's interesting. The, uh, I was talking to their offensive coordinator, Ralph Regan, before the game, and 
I said, how far do you got to get down sometimes to look for a score kicking-wise? He goes, you know, the way the wind's blowing, Tom, I no talent today. Did not bother Joe Hamilton that time. The kickoff by Philip Newman into that wind. How tough was that? Big hit laid on Dre Brittingham, and he fumbled the football. Georgia Tech says they have the football. No indication from our referee at the moment. Well, apparently not. Ronald Cherry working this crew. And here comes Hades offense onto the field. Quarterback by the junior from Elizabethtown, Pennsylvania. Naval name to him in Brian Broadwater. Reddingham in motion. Broadwater to the far side. Pitches to him. Reddingham, first down. The option on display, run to perfection on the first snap of the season by Navy. Well, and uh, this is going to cause Georgia Tech's defense problems all day. There's a late flag. It just shows you how you can really put emphasis on the corner. That time, Broadwater taking it to the corner. And Georgia Tech's defense guilty of the personal foul, perhaps the late hit on Brittingham. It's really a speed option to the wide side of the field. Broadwater, watch him take it right to the defender, pitch it at the last moment to Brittingham. On the defense, 15 yards, first step. You saw that hit. So the ball now spotted at the 49-yard line of Georgia Tech. One play, and Navy's on the Yellow Jacket side of the field. And I'm not sure if they flagged the defender that time, hitting Brittingham out of the bounds, but it looked like it was fairly clean. But nonetheless, the flag comes out. A couple of slot backs, Raheem Lambert. The lone setback, Brittingham comes this way and is racked up pretty good. Laid out by double fives on the play for the Yellow Jackets today. And Greg gathers. Terrence Anderson is an All-American and a Rhodes Scholar, the senior over the football. Outstanding. John Vereen, one of a pair of slot backs, we'll see today the fastest of the pair, along with Brittingham. For a ball control attack. Gathers, by the way, on the stop there, one of two freshmen, two freshmen starting for the Yellow Jackets defensively. The throw Broadwater, play action, key. he's got a man, and the catch is made at the 15-yard line, down to the 14, first down, Mitt Chipman. Matt O'Donnell holds it in, the gain of 35. So, boy, you watch Broadwater come back, a little play action into the line. He just fires the ball down the field to O'Donnell. That's one of the big things that Navy can pull off, that play action into the line. They come off the ball so hard, it freezes the defense. Two big plays, one of 13, that of 35, and they run it up between the tackles down to the 11-yard line. So what you're saying, the option, you bring the quarters in, the other members of the secondary, and you've got problems there. Here is Georgia Tech up front. Assignment football for George O'Leary's defense today. Gunther Chrysan, a sophomore inside, tips the scales at 280. Chris Edwards stands 6 feet, 5 inches tall. Tavares Tillman, one of the finest defensive backs in all the nation, led Georgia Tech in tackles in the secondary a year ago. Broadwater to the short side. Trouble. And is marked out of bounds at the six-yard line. He very nearly scooted his way into the end zone. He gets a great block by Raheem Lambert to free him. Well, here they go again. Speed option onto the corner. Keep an eye. Look at that block right there. Just drops a man, takes him to his feet. Broadwater lowers his shoulder, and he does step out right about the six-yard line. Great effort that time by both the fullback, Raheem Lambert, and Broadwater. Trying to answer Georgia Tech's opening score. Broadwater stood up and driven back, and you can hear the collision all the way upstairs. The freshman, number 42, Ricardo Wimbush. A true freshman on the tackle for Georgia Tech. And a timeout taken. Perhaps to measure... Maybe looking to uh, earn the first and goal. Impressed, by the way, the Boy. midshipmen have moved the football against Georgia Tech. I'm impressed with the tempo of the game thus far. Both offenses, that's a first down for Navy. 
both offenses, really up-tempo offenses, Paul, where both offensive coordinators want to come out of the gate. They want production, and really more so for Navy. They want to control the clock today. It's very important for them to control it anywhere from plus 30 minutes to hopefully 35 minutes for Charlie Weatherby and his offense. Lambert with Brunningham and Vereen. The slot back. This is Vereen. On first down. Broadwater looking to follow Raheem into the hole as a lead blocker, and Georgia Tech is ready for it. The Yellow Jackets playing today with a new defensive coordinator, first-year man Ted Roof, and working on defending this option attack. I think right now the strength of that Georgia Tech defense lies right in the middle. They're playing awfully tough. Chris Edwards, one of the leaders there, number five. Second and goal. Brittingham with the pin. Marine the block. Touchdown, Navy. The dress today is Summer Whites <laughs> for the 4,000 members. Of you the know what they say? They say don't wear white after Labor Day, but I, the Navy <laughs> oh, Labor Day's Monday. Here. Labor Day's Monday. Here's Ruddingham. Here it is. Nice, nice work again by Broadwater. Flips the ball out to Brittingham, and he's just going full speed and takes it right behind the block of John Vereen into the end zone for six points. Chubbs to the Tigers game. Georgia Tech took the opening kickoff and drove the length of the field. And undaunted, Navy marched right back. We're locked up midway through our opening quarter. It's best if he's a tight. Offensive line coach Gene McKeon in his 30th year of coaching Division I football. His offensive line impressive on that opening possession for Navy. Well, they're one of the best offensive lines they've had at Navy. Take a look at this Navy scoring drive. He plays 77 yards, only 247 off the clock. And speaking with Mike Vaught, the offensive coordinator before the game, he said, you know, Tom, he goes, this might be the best offensive line we've had here in about five or six years. A big part of that, Terrence Anderson, number 62. Come back, Tom, he's going to run like that. All right, that's not a problem. All right, good job on the pass protection, all right? Charlie Weatherby. His offense, he's calling the plays, tying this game. Vereen leading the way for Brittingham. Getting that speed option right out onto the perimeter to the short side, and Brittingham just going full speed, takes the perfect pitch that time for Broadwater into the end zone. Navy ties the game up 7-7. When Navy began its two-a-day practices, they did it uh, under the lights, except their morning practice was before the sun arrived. <laughs> 5.30 a.m. in full gear, gentlemen. We look forward to the pleasure of your company. <laughs> Joe Burns, nice kick by shoots to Wind Aiden. Thanks to a tropical storm, Dennis, five yards into the end zone, and the Georgia Tech begins at the 20-yard line. Now we know why Navy deferred that opening toss. They wanted that win for the first quarter. It's that much of a factor. Charlie Weatherby electing to go with the win that time, and his quarterback, Brian Broadwater, directing the controls quite nicely. Joe Hamilton connected on his first three passing attempts of the um, opening drive. While we have a moment, a game break with Kevin and Kelly. Paul, if Joe Hamilton wants to stay in the Heisman race, he better get busy because Ron Dane is going crazy in Madison. The seven-yard touchdown, his second of the day. He had 63 yards in the first quarter, Wisconsin up 14 to zip. Let's head back to Annapolis. Ron Dane will be uh, front and center on Fox Sports Net in a couple of weeks uh, in Cincinnati against the Bearcats. He'll have a great game and a bunch of cats. He may have the all-time. Rushing mark by that time. The Heisman chase, and here it's opening day, and we're already talking about the downtown athletic clubs. And why not? Drew Brees and Purdue playing in Orlando today. Ron Dane on display, and there's Joe Hamilton. I kind of like Chris Redman, the quarterback from Louisville, I, although it's going to really be dependent on how many games they go out and win. Peter Warwick, of course, Florida State, and I don't know if the linebacker's up there. How's the linebacker in there for the Heisman Trophy? Sure. Defensive players win that. <laughs> On first down, Hamilton humps 
sets it up this way, and there's interference to Rocky. Cracked out of bounds. That's Joe Burns rather than Rogers at the uh, 34 yard line. A great swarming defense that time. Listen to it in real speed. Hells is going to flip it out to Burns and then he gets blasted. Danny Doppelmeyer flying up to strong safety. Known to pass a look to defensive captain. Second down, picked up, up three, three and a half. A wishbone set. He's so versatile. Will uh, Georgia Tech, Ed Wilder this time at 255 pounds. We have seen him with multiple offenses, and now here, the wishbone. Coming up Monday, Labor Day night, ex-Bronco star and future Hall of Famer John Elway is the guest. Ron Pitts, Billy Moss, John retiring last year after leading the Broncos to their second consecutive Super Bowl. We look forward to that. Ought to be a great show Monday on Fox Sports Net. Third choice. Flags down though, as a Tech appears to have converted. Running the ball straight ahead to Phillip Rogers. But the flag. This is an Atlantic Coast Conference officiating crew that Georgia Tech brings with them as the co-champions of the ACC. They shared that honor last year with Florida State. And the Florida State very much on their minds, although they would deny it for next week. Joe Hamilton plays in Dope Campbell Stadium against Peter Warwick, Bobby Bowden, and the Seminoles. And the defense refused for sale. And you would happen to, to believe that uh, Florida State is watching this telecast today from Tallahassee. Well, you would think Georgia Tech's won every game they've played since they played, actually, and lost to Florida State last year, October 24th. They've reeled off five wins, including a New Year's Day victory over Notre Dame. Wilder and Burns behind Hamilton. He drops the football and has to go and fall on it back at the 37-yard line. And the first mistake today we've seen out of the Georgia Tech offense. And speaking to Ralph Regan, the offensive coordinator for Georgia Tech yesterday, I said, I said, Ralph, what's keeping you up at night? Why aren't you sleeping? And he said, Tom, ball security. I'm worried about it. We're spilling the ball. We're dumping it all over the grass. And right there, an experienced quarterback in Hamilton doing a little log bowling. Ralph Friedgen, by the way, is uh, the appointed interim head coach on the sideline, if you would, for a Georgia Leary who's upstairs. Hamilton scoops up the low snap and then overshoots Ted. That play never got going well. Noah King, out of the shotgun, skipped it up to Hamilton. And now it's third down and more. George O'Leary, if you're just joining us, a minor infraction. He loaned a former player on a day that player had to register for class $275 so the player could sign up for the class and then pay him back right after. And the NCAA said, well, it is a secondary violation, so here's the penalty. Go upstairs before a quarter. <laughs> All right? Get the guys on the sideline a break. Hamilton, I get trouble with that handoff. Being shredded out of his jersey, he can scramble when the play breaks down. A completed pass, shy of the first down at midfield. Boy, is he dangerous. Play is never over when Hamilton has the football. Hamilton is quite a playmaker, and he's unwilling to go down that time, but Georgia Tech having to punt this time into the wind. Look for either a fair catch by Navy, or at least reasonable field position. To punt it now for Georgia Tech, Dan Dyke, this is the first kick of his career, a sophomore walk-off, who earned the job this week in a kicking competition. Dyke, his first effort into the teeth of that win. Fair catch called for, and made at the 12-yard line, and a flag up top. A flag right at the point of the catch by Billy Hubbard. And, and what they may call that time is interference around the player that was catching the punt. You have to give that player enough yardage around him in a circumference circle. Non-contact, kick catch interference. That's a five yards from the spot of the foul. First down. Other infractions. Sure enough. A 40-yard punt into the wind. Navy in a tie ball game. Has the football. Hello? <laughs> 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 Navy 
Navy. Is Georgia Tech looking past the midshipmen? George O'Leary's Well, not really. I, I, you know, that's been the big uh, question down in Atlanta is, and I think the media has tried to focus more on that game than the Navy game. And, and uh, I haven't brought up our second game, and I don't know anybody else on the staff that has. And I think the players are very focused, and probably more so because of not us telling them to stay focused, because of last year. You know, we came out, you know, Boston College came down and played very well and beat us at probably our own game at the line of scrimmage. And I think that was a wake-up call that from that game on, we went to 11 one-game seasons. And that's how we look at everything. It's, it's one game, it's a season, and once that season's over, we go to the next season. And, and the kids have bought into that, and that's what I hear a lot from my players. Boston College winning on opening day last year, and you see Florida State a week away, NC State a tremendous win. Michael Kane last week against Texas. I was joking with George yesterday. I said, hey, next week, just make sure Peter Warwick misses the team bus for Florida State, and you got a chance. Georgia Tech devouring Broadwater right at the point of attack. Greg Gathers, number 55. This is his first collegiate game, and he explodes into Broadwater. Greg Gathers, a true freshman. Boy, they're just going to unload right there in the defensive line. He comes from the backside, and that time, number 55, Greg Gathers, true freshman. Me nine. And the rush, much too much for Broadwater. Never had a chance. Gathers was there again at the point of attack. And it is three and out for Navy. His emotions today, how excited he must feel. You started time as a freshman. Well, a long time ago. I can barely remember. But Gathers, about 6'3", 255 out of St. John's High School. The place, Louisiana. Hey, he's a guy that just has that motor running. And Ted Roof, the defensive coordinator, all he says to his guys, hey, take care of your own house. I mean, and take care of the area around you. And right there, Greg Gathers doing a great job. Troy Callis. If he gets uh, some wind behind him, they kick this one a while, and he did not hit it well. Taking it to the uh, 44-yard line. Spinning out to the uh, right side. And off to the 40, the 35, and down to the 33-yard line. That's Marvius Hester. And Hester was a spark for the Yellow Jackets. Jamie Doffemeyer on the special teams tackle. Oh, just a big time return that time by Marvius Hester. He actually does a little on his own, and then he gets back to the return right, what they had planned, and Hester using his speed right there in athleticism. Nice return, and once again, putting Joe Hamilton at the controls. Tremendous for position, huh? Plus of, plus of the 50-yard line. Allen takes a long time. Keeps it on the ground. This is Rogers. Dragging to the... Uh, 30-yard line. Let's go back out west for a game break. And here's Kevin Frazier. Paul, we check in on second range Penn State, taking on Akron at home, and no problems. They zip on into the end zone. That's Mike Ceramelli with the two-yard run. The Nittany Lions in control. Seven zip in the first quarter. Let's head back to Annapolis. We have a good game. Sure do, uh, Kevin, with Tom Ramsey, Paul Kennedy. Joe Paterno is 50th year at the base of Mount Nittany. Hamilton today could not shake the tackle free of David Alexander. Tough to do to stop White in the open field, but the junior and Alexander did a nice job. A busy college football Saturday. We will go to Mile High for Colorado State in the 14th ranked Buffs. A little bit later tonight at 7 o'clock, Gary Barnett debuting and with it to the Mountain West Conference in the form of Colorado State. Mike Machete, his quarterback now, the man that took the purple to Pasadena, his first game in Colorado. First down. Rogers, running room. 12-yard line. And again, it's Alexander who has to make the open field stop. Boy, they're putting a lot of pressure on the Navy defense right now because they're mixing it up offensively. Little counter gap, and once again, the Georgia Tech offensive line just collapses that whole group of defenders right there. And boy, the running back again does such a great job getting up the field. Great vision that time by Rogers finding the open hole. 
Barry Watkins, freshman, slips out wide to the bottom of your screen. Des in motion atop it. And straight ahead, just coming right at the midshipman at the 10-yard line to pick up the first. Mike McGee, a junior, inside linebacker from Bellevue, Washington, filled the hole. When you have a, an offensive line at Georgia Tech Sports, uh, all five of whom have started in years gone by, Noah King now the center who follows a Jacobs Award winner in the All-American Craig Page, shifting from guard to center. That is the strength of the team, and you have to utilize it. You have to get push against Navy. And it really comes down to pad level. Those big guys are up underneath those Navy midshipmen just by about an inch or so. Navy brings the blitz. Hamilton runs right at it on the option. Blake cuts back and scores. Judge attack in front on the run of 10 yards. Rashad Jones blitzing for Navy, and that limited the contain on this side. Well, he really did. They do a nice job sealing it, and then Hamilton just gets to the corner right away. Watch Wilder, 47. He cleans out his man, and then just a great deal of athleticism. Cutting on a dime is Joe Hamilton into the end zone. Luke Manger, another first-year player with his first career extra point attempt. And the freshman from Conyers, Georgia, has number 14's club in front, 14 to 7. Hamilton taking Georgia Tech into the end zone for the second time today in Navy Marine Corps Stadium. Head coach Charlie Weatherby, his team in Navy within a touchdown of Georgia Tech, but he must keep Hamilton and the Yellow Jackets offense off the field. Well, again, they're going to collapse it right there on the left side of the screen. All of a sudden, it's Hamilton racing to the corner, but watch his cut right here. Watch him just come back. All of a sudden, he leaves the defender on the grass, able to come in. He also had a nice jump at the end, but watch the fullback. He's going to come. Keep an eye on Wilder. 47 right here. He gets his guy out of the way. Just leaves open field for Joe Hamilton. And then watches. Oh, right there. He went skying into the arms of one of his teammates. Our Buick scoring drive summary. Hamilton, after a marvelous Hester's 24-yard punt return, gave him exceptional field position. Didn't have very far to travel, just 34 yards, a third of the field. Both touchdowns today. Uh, they're in the first quarter for Georgia Tech scored on the ground. John Vereen watches the ball skip into the end zone where it will be brought out to the 20-yard uh, line with only nine seconds remaining in this first quarter. Georgia Tech, which won a national championship when this decade of the 90s began in 1990 under Bobby Ross, now the head coach of the Detroit Lions. But they have struggled in years gone by for a number of reasons against the midshipmen. It's interesting. Talking to the, the staffs of both coaches, they really have an undue amount, amount of respect for Bobby Ross. And he really was so integral to bringing Georgia Tech football back to prominence. And, hey, the ACC's tough, tough conference to play in. You're going to face some tough opponents. And Bobby Ross able to just really, of course, piece some great teams together. Of course, Ralph Friedgen, part of that staff. He's had some long-time participants at staff. George O'Leary, of course, on Bobby Ross's staff. But George talks to Bobby often. Asked him if he talked to him recently. He said, yeah, he wish he had Barry Sanders back. Following the incompletion intended for Travis Williams, second in ten. Maybe it was three and out in its last possession. And uh, here, it's third down already. Another incompleted pass. Now, this is maybe getting away a little bit from its game plan as Matt O'Donnell can't scoop up the, the low throws from Broadwater. And the uh, first quarter with the, but two seconds to go, they took over with nine seconds left. They've run two plays against Georgia Tech and only seven seconds have run off the clock. That is not the game plan for today's outing if you're uh, Charlie Weatherby. No, you want to run as many plays as possible. Right now, they're going backwards. Oh, an illegal chop block on the offense. Half the distance, replay the down. 
you know, you get into that territory a lot when you run option football, and I'll tell you why. A lot of cutting, what, what coaches refer to as block low on the man, and then there's these safety zones outside the tackle box. You can even you can only block below the waist three yards outside that tackle box, and really it's up to the interpretation of the officials. If he sees a low block outside that tackle box, it'll be a flag. That's just what happened. Second down now, Broadwater against the gray. Able to complete this to Matt O'Donnell. O'Donnell breaking tackles. Fighting his way out to the 25 and the 26-yard line. That's a gain on the play of uh, 16 yards. Uh, we've reached the end of the first quarter. And there you go. End of the first quarter. 14-7, Georgia Tech taking on the blue and gold of the seventh. Fox Sports Nets College Football Saturday from one of the most picturesque cities, township actually, in all of America. We're on the shores of the Chesapeake here in Annapolis, the home of the Naval Academy. And today, college football with Tom Ramsey. I'm Paul Kennedy. Georgia Tech from the Atlantic Coast Conference, the reigning co-champions, leading by a touchdown. Brian Broadwater needs to convert here. He faces third down and four. He gets a block. And he fumbles the ball on contact at the 30-yard line. Out it came. He was able to get back on it. And I'll tell you what happened when he fumbled. He actually fumbled before he reached the first down marker, but his fumble actually down. carried. He recovered his own fumble, Paul, ended up getting past the first down marker. Listen on. The strip and the hit. That was the Yellow Jackets' Chris Young. But it is a first down, a huge break for Navy. Broadwater again to the short side and the pitch. Get that ball down. Chris Young's bringing it again. Steve Holley off the high pitch. Able to tuck that ball, which nearly went over his head. There is the former Navy quarterback, and Holly shifted to slot back this season. Yeah, Steve Holly, of course, starting five games for the midshipmen last year. Did a great job, and Traveris Tillman came up and rocked his world. On the senior. Be the best football player that Georgia Tech has in Tillman. Second down throw. O'Donnell up at the 32-yard line in front of Jamara Clark, the corner. Matt O'Donnell falling in the third completion of this game. And what's interesting, Paul, about Tillman, he's the top returning tackler for that Georgia Tech defense. Ted Rube, the defense coordinator, actually a little bit concerned. Tech lost three of their top four tacklers coming into this year, and a lot of questions, Mark, although right now they're ahead 14-7. Holly on the move. They throw out into the flat, and it's in and out of the hands of Dre Brittingham at the 31-yard line. Incomplete. Jamara Clark, the corner, number one. Coming up that time and really just wreaking havoc on that play. And yeah, the corners have warmed up because we've seen Chris Young in the secondary. Tavares Tillman, the free safety with a big shot. Now Jamara Clark. So the Yellow Jacket defense is starting to fly around here early in the second quarter. That first quarter opening day jitters perhaps. Yeah, I think they have to settle into their defense. They want to keep it simple coming out of the gate, but Ted Roof has an awfully big playbook in that defense. He can move a lot of guys around. 41 yards was with the win. This is into the win. Marvius Hester, whose marvelous return for Georgia Tech in business, has the heart to catch it with the heat coming down on it. Returns it to the 42. A college football season preview special that is very special tonight at 6.30 Eastern. Kevin Frazier, Hall of Famer Kellen Winslow, with an outlook on 1999, the college game. We look forward to Tyre Fall with you. College football Saturday. A couple of games, too, on the backside. Don't forget, Colorado and Colorado State, and they're playing that in Mile High Stadium. 
Fumble reverse to the far side, 40-yard line, 45, and the midfield struck out of bounds. It's Kerry Watkins, flanker, to beat Alexander, yanks him down by his collar, and there is Georgia Tech in the top 10. And next week, Florida State. So how could they possibly focus for this game? Boy, I tell you, there's a, there's a lot of good teams there. There's a few that aren't in there that I bet you when Kellen Winslow shows his top five to top ten teams, there's going to be a couple surprises, as he alluded to early in the broadcast. I'm kind of curious to see. Earl Fontaine on the tough tackle of big Ed Wilder. Ed Wilder is rock solid. He is the man that uh, the Georgia Tech players gravitate to. He might not be the All-American, most well-known player, but he is the locker room leader in many ways. With that. Ed Wilder is not only a locker room leader, he's a big part of that offense. He can play H-back as well as tight end and fullback. He's an awfully big part of that Tech offense. He could play offensive guard too. The blitz. They get to Hamilton. Off the edge on the sack, Chris Oliver. Untouched. Well, they come off the edge, and right here, Joe Hamilton unable to really coming out of the backfield that time. They lose, uh, 16. Uh, yeah. lose nine on this time. Chris Oliver came in from his safety position. And that's what the defense has to do for Navy. They're going to bring the strong safety sometimes and create that extra pass defender that's unaccounted for in the blocking scheme. Second down, 19 now. After the loss of nine, following the first sack, and Hamilton showing us that arm. Tough catch across midfield. At the 40-yard uh, line, the ball held on to by Des White. Now he's a home run hitter. He can run in open space, and he can also make a difficult grab with, in this case, Bass Williams hanging on it. Oh, he can. And what's nice is it's a nice comeback route. He drove off the defender to Des White and able to come back, and Joe Hamilton able to spin the ball out nice. And right now they show another wrinkle. They line up in the true wishbone. And with Des White back there, Wilder behind it. Hamilton pitches to White, and White working his way around Bass Williams, and then cracked by Chris LaBoy. Well, uh, just a great use of personnel and play calling right here by Ralph Regan, the offensive coordinator. And what Ralph is able to do is all of a sudden he has a third and short. They line up in the wishbone. It's another new look for this Navy team, and they'll take a true triple option. And right there, Joe Hamilton brings it out to the corner, pitches it out to Des White, and they throw a flag on Chris Lepore for hitting White out of bounds. Automatic first down. And the late hit on Lepore will march that football even deeper. The ball will be marked at the 18-yard line. First down Tech and uh, on the verge of striking once again. The tight end as he just shifts to the near side. Off the right side. A lot of running room. Tripped up. Down to the five yard line. Joe Burns, Chris Lepore able to get a piece of him. That shoestring. And the last time Joe Burns came this way, he played Maryland. He had a breakout game. Rush for 179 yards against the Terrapins. Yeah, once again, following the big right tackle, John Carmen. And Burns is able to just hit the corner. Lepore makes a nice diving tackle because they had a blocker out front. Ralph Regan, right there. That he's calling those plays. He's He's awfully thankful it's not raining, as it was a little sprinkling before the game, because that way he'd have to get that plastic out and cover those papers up. All right, still get some rain. First and goal. Hamilton checked off. Throw it. Oh, yeah. out. And it's cut for a touchdown. Check to the play. Touchdown, Georgia Tech, which leads now 20 to 7. Joe Hamilton once again delivering the ball to Kerry Watkins. Kerry Watkins, they love the way he moves around, but watch just the quick rhythm passing, just quick three-step drop, ball comes out, 
right there. He throws it between defenders. In for the score. Extra point is good. Tech goes up 21 to 7. Terry Watkins, very first reception of his varsity career for a touchdown. 21 7. Yellow Jackets. Charlie Weatherby frustrated, obviously. Uh, his offense unable to sustain. Hamilton taking Georgia Tech right back down the field and Joe throwing his first touchdown pass of the year to a freshman. Boy, and Kerry Watkins are so happy that they're getting production out of him, Paul. The offense was a question mark coming in with the departure of Charlie Ro Rogers. And Charlie Rogers, a big play receiver for them a year ago. Take a look at the Buick scoring drive. Seven plays for the Yellow Jackets, 58 yards, only 208 off the clock. And Watkins steps up his game because they missed Charlie Rogers, who averaged 9.1 yards a touch. Every time he touched the ball a year ago, he got nine yards, and Ralph Friedman said, hey, that's a lot of offense we're going to miss. We need Watkins to step up right there, taking a nice pass in from Joe Hamilton. Freshman Philip Newman to kick off as uh, you cover the kick here on Fox Sports Net. Run downfield with the Yellow Jackets. And aided by the wind, that was nine yards deep for John Barina Navy. For the midshipmen, a... Uh, Charlie Weatherby with a new offensive coordinator, a new defensive coordinator, and trying to sustain offensively. As NFL this morning premieres Sunday, September 12th at 11 o'clock, Chris Myers, Jackie Slater, Marv Levy, how's that for a lineup? Marv, the two-time coach of the year, was the Redskins special teams coach under George Allen in this city. They're nearby for Washington, slip that in. And of course, Jackie, a seven-time Pro Bowler, 20 years for the Rams. NFL this morning. Looking forward to that. Father time, they call it Jackie Slater. On first down, uh, forget those pitch passes that were unsuccessful the previous possession. Right up the middle and start running the clock for Navy, and that's Raheem Lambert. Charlie Weatherby calling the plays this year with the new offensive coordinator, Mike Vaught, having been brought aboard. And a new assistant head coach in Sammy Steinmark, who joined... Uh, Navy after 18 years at Air Force. He shook up his staff on both sides of the football. Did Weatherby after last year's very disappointing three and eight years. Bud Water. Oh, interesting you say that about Sammy Steinmark coming over from Air Force. Right now the Navy offense has taken some plays out of that Air Force playbook. Sammy Steinmark very integral in designing some of these plays, but a moment ago, you're going to take a look at Georgia Tech on offense. Going back to Sammy Steinmark, he's actually uh, a big influence on that season. Right now, take a look at third down conversions. So far, two for four. And a motion up front prior to the snap. And our referee again, Ronald Cherry, with his staff huddled around him. Well, prior to the snap, ball stalled on the offense. That's a five-yard penalty. And it turns third, down. third and six off Navy's third flag of the afternoon into about third and ten. So Broadwater needs a first down in the worst way. The Yellow Jackets have hung two quick touchdowns on the board. One at the end of the first period. One here to start the second. Marine starts in motion. Broadwater. Throw steps up and it's dropped. Matt O'Donnell cannot hold on to it. The pass just behind me, but a very catchable ball. It would have been for the first upfield at the 35. And it's fourth down. Punting unit will have to come on. Yeah, awfully tough this time. Navy having to punt out of their own end. And you just want to get some first downs offensively if you're Navy because you want to keep the ball out of Joe Hamilton's hands. Joe Hamilton doing a great job thus far. Georgia Tech with a 14-point lead. And early in the game when Navy had the win behind him, they were able to get a quick score. But right now, once again, the punting unit on the field. We have seen Marvius Hester before. This is Des. Des White from the 40. A flag thrown in behind him. Another flag, contact from behind, maybe flag on Georgia Tech. 
as a Des White. You hold your breath every time Des touches the ball because he can go. He, Seen that earlier on the opening kickoff today, returned at 45. And, and what's interesting about Des White, he's not a super fast guy, but that he's was a long Hester. Let me correct this. Uh, my mistake. That is Hester. Marvius Hester. Again, it's awfully tough to see the numbers up here. The well, the block in the back on the return team. That's a 10 yard penalty. First down. <laughs> An illegal block. And we want to split the three's got further to come. I don't care about that guy. Don't take two on one. If he lays on the ground, you work at the linebacker. All right, we'll get to the backside linebacker. So if we run 10 on 11. That's a little offensive line talk right there. Get up to the next level. You got a guy on the ground. And they're saying they're just trying to get the right scheme and execute the play that called. Sean Hamilton has engineered three touchdown drives, thrown one touchdown pass, scored another, and here's short for Des White, and off target. Got off to a good start, and this is fourth year as Georgia Tech starting quarterback, and in fact his 34th career start, including a couple of bowl games. He's been the most valuable player in each of the last two and bowl games that Georgia Tech has played in. And only his second incompletion that time, nine for 11 on the day, is Joe Hamilton doing a great job running that Tech offense. Once again, they show a wishbone look. Only the second incomplete pass, followed by here, Big Ed Wilder. Falling for it. A lot of promotion and hype for Hamilton for the Heisman. You know that the John Heisman, the father of that trophy, coached for 15 years at the outset of the century at Georgia Tech, but the Yellow Jackets have never had a player win the Heisman Trophy. The man who came the closest, Billy Lothridge, the late Billy Lothridge. Quarterback, all-around athlete, hunted, place kick. He finished second to Roger Staubach of Navy. 1963. Roger the Dodger, midshipman himself. Well, you think about it, you know, Roger Staubach, there's the wall right there with the two names. Joe Bolino. And their winners. Staubach. Third down now. Important snap, you would think, for Navy. Nearly picked off. Throwing to the flat on the near side. Nearly grabbed in and out of the hands of the uh, linebacker in Shaka Martin. Hey, how rough are they playing out there? Let me tell you how rough they're playing. They're playing so tough, these guys are going nose to nose. Look at their helmets. They got to break these guys up, but where's this guy's head? <laughs> it only happens once in a while, but sometimes that equipment gets stuck together. They got to extract it from one another. The first three and out for Navy. Billy Hubbard fields it at the 15. First three and out for Georgia Tech. He's up to the 22-yard line. So a 7.54 remaining in the first half. Following a 49-yard punt and 7-yard return, Navy owns the football once again. All day long. A brand new season of college football. Autumn has arrived on Fox Sports Net. And 10th ranked Georgia Tech living up to its billing. Joe Hamilton has rushed for a touchdown, scored a touchdown. Des White returned the opening kickoff for 45 of those yards. And Matt O'Donnell has been one of Navy's more effective weapons. Uh, now Tech must play defense. And Navy just coming onto the field. There is the former Yellow Jacket, All-Atlantic Coast Conference linebacker, Ted Roof their first year defensive coordinator. And Ted Roof played at Georgia Tech. Of course, he's got those wristbands. If you take a look at him, he's got some plays on some of those wristbands, and they color code some of those. And they wigwag them in off the sideline because some of his calls are so lengthy in nature that it allows the players just to relate to a color. But my question yesterday to him was, well, what happens if one of your players is colorblind? Color. <laughs> he has not one but two <laughs> wristbands. Here is the Akata. They run the scissors inside. It works pretty well. Out across the 25, 27-yard line. Felipe Claybrooks on the stop this time. The scissors off the slot back. We've seen Notre Dame for years run that effectively, and in this case, Brittingham. Well, that's one of the plays you run out of that option-style offense. You can really kind of misdirect some of your players and 
Nate does such a great job of putting people in motion, just like this play and starting the option. To the 20, make that the 30-yard line. Here's the uh, quarterback and Brian Broadwater, Chris Edwards, the linebacker, all six feet and five of it. Tall, Worthen, Georgia, just 225 pounds. He still is going to grow, obviously, getting him. Yeah, he's, he, he's a good-looking prospect, and they like gathers, too. And one other thing in Ted Roos' defense, his philosophy, he wants to stuff that inside, stuff that fullback dive, and, and push the Navy offense out to the perimeter. Parade. Nothing doing. Nowhere for John to go off the uh, right side. Erwin Eccles, or 94, another first-year player, the freshman. Getting some playing time in the uh, first half. Forces fourth down. And here comes the punt unit. Uh, Navy waits a while, don't they, before sending the kicking game on? Right? Well, uh, I'm surprised. I thought they waited too long, in fact. I thought they may elect to go for a fourth and short there, but Charlie Weatherby understanding he's still deep in his own territory. Marvius Hester to field the punt of Trey Kalin from the 27. The first man misses, as does the second and third. Not the fourth. Up to the 36-yard line. Chris Lepore on special teams with the stop. Hamilton and the Yellow Jackets in business in a moment. All right, Kevin, uh, Ron Dane, uh, the uh, folks here quieted, as you see, the brigade of midshipmen, not as feisty as they were at the outset by the exploits of another Heisman Trophy candidate in Joe Hamilton. Three first-half touchdowns out of the Yellow Jackets, and we still have close to six minutes remaining prior to the Nissan halftime report. They'll keep it on the ground, and Rodgers has a solid five before... Encountering Chris Lepore, junior free safety. There is Phil Rogers. He weighs 230. He has a 6% body fat measurement to it. Hard as a rock. It's kind of like you. Oh, you're right around 5 or 6%. Not quite. Up early. Added about, added about 10 pounds, did Rogers, of muscle in the offseason. So if you're good, you can get better. <laughs> he proves. Second down snap. Looking for motion, and he gets it out of Kerry Watkins. Rodgers again keeps the legs churning up to the 45-yard line. And David Rhino, the nose tackle, and no relation to the only three-time All-American in Georgia Tech, Laura. Here is David. Remember Randy Rhino? One of my favorite yellow jackets of all time. Well, it's spelled differently. And David here from Gibbsboro, New Jersey. First question I'll ask him, though, any relation to Randy Rhino? No. Whether Rhino or no Rhino, right now that Georgia Tech offensive line dominating the line of scrimmage and really knocking the Navy midshipmen back on their heels. Taking it right at him, but stood up and fighting. Look at Rodgers. He battled for that first down. Jamie Doffelmeyer came up from the strong safety position with the initial contact. And then... Rodgers got the better of the two men. Now watch that offensive tackle again. Big John Carmen. He's the man they're trying to follow. He pushes two guys out of the way. But then all of a sudden, Phil, watch Philip Rogers. You just mentioned he put on an extra 10 pounds. Look at the drive and the leg drive right there. Puts his hand down. Gets a couple extra yards. All second effort. Play action. After all those running plays, Hamilton wants to go over the top. It was contact at the 10-yard line. But no flag thrown on the attendant target, Kerry Watkins bumping with David Alexander. So that the safeties weren't biting, the corners weren't sucked in by the ground game. Yeah, that time just a nice job by the Navy midshipmen on defense, staying back. Some of that's game planning. They know Georgia Tech likes to throw the ball deep with Hamilton, uses big play receivers, Watkins, White, mm -hmm. Will Glover. Sometimes Ralph Regan today, he said, hey, don't, you know, don't be surprised. We're going to run some three wides as well. Wilder in front of Burns in that yellow jacket backfield as uh, Navy brings the blitz against the screen. What a great call. This is Burns. 40 down to the 36-yard line. The perfect call 
against Navy's Blitzky. Well, exactly, Paul. You know, all of a sudden, I was going to say a moment ago, if I'm Navy, I'm going to start blitzing, but the man responsible for the back comes in right there. All of a sudden, he gets caught in the wash. What a great play call because there's no one outside the cover. Joe Burns, they set the play up nicely. The offensive linemen are down the field getting some blocks. Good game for Tech. A pickup of 16 and the 10th completion for Hamilton here in the first half. It has a 340 remaining in it. Dez starts in motion and now they'll dash the middle. Say this about the uh, audio level of the shots that we're hearing. Navy is trying to fly to the football today. They are passing the wood. A very busy, eventful weekend on Fox Sports Net of college football tomorrow. TCU, which blasted Southern Cal last year in the bowl meeting between the two, the Horn Frogs, now take on Arizona, which has fallen all the way to 15. You know the Wildcats want to get back. The reigning Conference USA champion, Tulane, at Southern Miss. And then you'll be in Tempe. Arizona. Red Raiders come to town. On second down, Hamilton. 25-yard line, and Gary Lane wraps him up. And Tech is marching. That was the seventh play, and it earns the first down. A lot of football on college football weekend. Watch again how Hamilton is just able to cut on a dime. He's looking for the pitch man. Down the field, I like that. Joe Hamilton looking to make plays all the time. And once again, that leader of Tech offense really putting a lot of pressure on the Navy defense. That's how they want to run their offense. They want to continually put pressure on the defense. Calling the play at Check. the line of scrimmage. Right, checking off at the line. Three-step drop. The wide receivers may not have heard the check. As Joe looked their way to the field side, Nobody was open, and he had to take off. Is it the route he expected to see wasn't there? And what's interesting, they don't do a lot of checking off at the line of scrimmage. He actually halted Des White in motion that time and tried to get to the other play. I think you're absolutely right, Paul, in saying that outside receivers didn't hear the play. They really want to run an up-tempo offense. They figure they're going to get about 15 possessions over the course of the game. They want to run. They want to run in excess of 70 plays. Rodgers cuts back. Slips to a tackle. Tired arms for Navy late in the first half. First and goal at the six-yard line. Mike McGee, the linebacker, on the stop of the very impressive Philip Rogers. And we have less than two minutes to go. Georgia Tech looking to uh, exhaust the clock and expand their advantage to three TDs before halftime. Well on their way. Rogers, sensational in this first half. Burns this time with a hole. Stretches to the goal line. And he is inches shy. Oh, hoping to hit the call. Thought he had it. With the right hand, but they'll mark him down. And the, the rest of his body, other than that long right arm, it contacted the ground outside the end zone. Well, point of attack once again. The size differential of Georgia Tech pad level really starting to take hold right now. They're getting underneath the midshipman. Okay, that time Burns does a great job leaning forward, but no doubt no. this time. Philip Rogers on the 11th play of the drive with less than a minute to go in the first half. Philip Rogers is in the end zone for a second time. Two touchdowns for Rogers. And it's 27-7. Yellow Jackets. Boy, averaging over five yards a carry. Right now, Rogers running behind that big offensive line, doing some damage and just chipping away at the clock as well. Manger tacks on his second extra point. They're platooning their kicking specialists. No mistaking this. The bonnet yellow jacket ground game is at full speed ahead. Georgia Tech's offensive line, John Carmen, Bill Magadan, Noah King, Burks, and Brown. Great job up front in the first half. Boy, it really, really is. Look at how low these Georgia Tech players are right there. See, they're just getting leverage at the point of attack. 
Philip Rogers able to take it. Watch the big tackle again. John Carmen. He just goes and oh, he's like a bulldozer. He just knocks him back. Midshipmen really have no chance right there. The weight differential. That's a problem. Awfully. Not, boy, I tell you what, the weight difference is a lot different than the time of possession. <laughs> RPF like Georgia Tech scoring drive, the second to long march today. In fact, the longest of the afternoon for Tech. Vereen, the wind has died down, so he'll have a return. John won't reach the 20, though. Fine special teams coverage on the part of the Yellow Jackets. Coming up on our Nissan Halftime Report, Kevin and Kellen, of course, from Los Angeles with scores from a busy afternoon of college football. The Nittany Lions growling again, as is the Great Dane for Wisconsin. Penn State Mauling, Arizona. But you know, it's one of the things about opening day, the first game of the season, you don't know how well your guys are going to tackle. And Arizona didn't tackle anybody at Penn State. I'm sure Dick Tomey rode them all the way home and said, hey guys, if you're going to buy for the Pac-10 crown, you got to go out and hit some people. Brian Broadwater out across the 20 to the 22-yard uh, line. Chris Young on the uh, stop. First time they've been able to get just a bit of a gash, a bit of an opening. And you know, one of the most amazing things, looking a moment ago at the time of possession that was relatively even in that first half, Georgia Tech, 44 plays, Navy, 24 plays. So another 20 plays, but look at the hit Broadwater takes. Oh, oh Tillman coming up for free safety. You're going to be an option quarterback. You're going to take some licks. So that was a pretty good shot on the chops of Raheem Lambert from little Jamara Clark. He may stand all of 5'8", but he's not afraid to put his helmet in there. And the tutorial continues on the Yellow Jacket sideline. Everything can be a board. They don't have a, uh, a gun here. Well, they do, but it's more of a, a howitzer. And on that note, the Charlie Weatherby and the midshipmen look to regroup. They retreat. Georgia Tech ranked 10th in the nation, living up to that billing and not looking ahead to Florida State in that matchup next week. That's the story here at halftime, 28-7 Georgia Tech. Now Kevin and Kellett and our Fox Sports Net Center. Set for our second half on Fox Sports Net, college football Saturday from Navy Marine Corps Stadium. Here come the midshipmen, returning to what might best be described as Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. Philip Rogers and the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets have been very dominating here in the first half with Tom Ramsey of Paul Kennedy. Phil Rogers with 74 yards rushing, and he has scored two touchdowns in the first half. It hasn't been Des White or Joe Hamilton. In large measure, it's been Rogers. Rogers is really taking control behind a big offensive line that's just dominating the line of scrimmage. I hear Joe Hamilton handing off to him right there, and you see Rogers just coming over, tackle once again. John Carmen, the big right tackle there, again down the field with a big block. Hamilton's had some nice passes, but like you said, Paul, a moment ago, Rogers has been the man in the first half. So for Rogers and all those offensive weapons, a look at the numbers that they have been able to uh, produce here on our halftime statistics. And I think the most interesting numbers, you look at time of possession fairly even, but the one that jumps out, the total plays almost doubling what Navy has. And of course, the rushing yards. Georgia Tech has elected to keep it on the ground and done a great job thus far today. So Navy, which won the opening toss and deferred to Georgia Tech, set to begin play in the second half, and Charlie Weatherby in what has been an autumn of changes, a new offensive coordinator, a new defensive coordinator for him, and a man working with really a lifetime contract, a 10-year deal that renews every year. He's going to be here uh, for the foreseeable future, trying to get his troops inspired his midshipman against the likes of Hamilton and Des White. White returning the opening kickoff today, 45 yards, and Georgia Tech took that opening kick and drove the length of the field. Oh, and I think Navy has played a little bit conservative coming out of the 
the box today. I would keep the ball away from their return men, the dangerous men, as often as I could. And I, I believe the same as Kellen Winslow does, too. Navy has to be patient to a certain degree in the second half, but they also have to put the ball in the air. I think the way they do that, play action pass. They have to continue to show run. That's the base part of their offense. But change it up a little bit, roll the pocket, let Broadwater show his arm strength and his ability to compete. Some of those summer white uniforms now covered by uh, rain gear. Some spray in the air. Tropical storm, of course. The that was Hurricane Dennis arriving at the Carolinas, yet uh, 150, 180 miles north here on the banks of the Chesapeake in Annapolis. The wind and spray were feeling the effects of that storm. Marine got a return. And the uh, line of scrimmage for Brian Broadwater, who remains at quarterback, is the 20-yard line. Navy has won the last three, including Chris McCoy quarterbacking the midshipmen in 1996 to a come-from-behind win. Broadwater on the pitch this time, and Reddingham with the cut. Well, they earned five. A very solid play on first down. Greg gathers Tavares Tillman, senior and a freshman, teaming on the tackle. And Navy found out in the first half... There's not a lot of production up that middle of that Georgia Tech defense. They're playing awfully tough, neutralizing the big center, Terrence Anderson, but they got to get out to the perimeter as well as working a little play-action pass. Reddingham pitches to Marie. Well done. Should have the first down. Got away from Tavares Tillman, did Marie. And uh, Broadwater ran the option behind his center, and Terrence... Anderson, big number 62, the senior captain. Boy, he's a big captain at all right. And he's a guy, he's scrapping inside. He's climbing to that next level. You see how he works on all fours right there. Well, I tell you, you know, those offensive linemen, they, they play in obscurity, but that, that man right there, Terrence Anderson, a real leader. I asked Charlie Weatherby before the game, hey, who are they going to look towards at the beginning of the third quarter? He said, Terrence Anderson. One of the best centers in all of college football, Raheem Lambert. Behind him, Gunther Kreisen, the defensive tackle on the stop. There is Lambert, the sophomore from Riverside, California. Out on the uh, West Coast, his fifth carry of the day. Moving close now to a 20 yards. The interior has been very expensive real estate for Navy today, hasn't it? The Georgia Tech has been doggedly determined not to give it up. They've been keeping everything in front of them, taking care of their house. That was the terminology on the part of the Tech coaches. Protect your house, your assignment, one player at a time. A seam here for Raheem Lambert. Edwards, the linebacker. Tillman, the safety on the tackle. Right here, taking it to the fullback. Right there, one missed tackle. And again, Raheem Lambert, watch him. He gets low again, and as long as you neutralize... That player in front of you, so many times Terrence Anderson's able to climb up the ladder to that next level, but it'll neutralize the nose tackle. Picking his way out close to midfield is Brian Broadwater. Now this is the Navy offense that we saw on the opening drive of the first half. This effective. Yeah, they want to up-tempo people. That means they want to come out. They want to come out and set a high tempo right there. Navy, Air Force, two of the top that three. The academies are three of the top test, top rushing teams. And then, of course, Ohio. But I mean, you have to run the wishbone at a lot of these academies because you're not going to get the kids that are 6'5", 295 pounds ordinarily. You're going to get guys that sometimes have to sit in the cockpit of an F-18 fighter plane. So Broadwater now, after the pickup of two, second down, and more. Big Costas Hazadakis, number 60, that tackle in front of your screen. To throw. And he has Vereen. Had the ball not let him so far, he might have run for another five or so. But the run setting up the pass and the swing pass to Vereen. a gain of 16. Here it is right here. See how Broadwater keeps his pad level down. He hides behind that offensive line. It just puts great touch onto the ball that time to Vereen. 
Good for the completion. Vereen doing a nice job hauling that one in. The eighth play of the drive. There is five more. Felipe Claybrook, defensive end. On the stop this time, as Navy begins to drive the ball, Marlon Terrell, his first carry of the afternoon. He is a fullback on the roster, is number 18. If you can believe a fullback that's 5'8 and maybe 190, it's not fullback size, is it? But he sets up in there. That'd be the smallest fullback in Division One. Broadwater pops through. Another first down. Nice wrinkle that time by Navy, and Broadwater comes in as Navy's top returning rusher as well. Rushed for almost 700 yards and a 4.2 average, but they fake the dive in here to the fullback. He'll take it and loop right back around. Watch as the offensive linemen stay on their blocks, and then he gets a nice little block. That was Brittingham. From Brittingham, Dre Brittingham coming in, giving a little chip on the linebacker, frees up Broadwater for some extra yardage. Trailing by three touchdowns, but moving the ball to open the second half. Until now, nowhere for him to go, and Felipe Claybrooks, a six foot four inch, 255 pound defensive end from Decatur, really hammers Navy's quarterback. He is a vocal, dynamic player, quite a presence, Claybrooks. Claybrook's coming down from that weak side linebacker position, just collapsing backside. And the guy who also is getting a lot of snaps, number 42, Ricardo Winbush on the inside there. Oh, great push underneath two. Penetration by the interior of that line. Well, I tell you what, Ricardo Winbush, number 42, comes up and just hits, keep an eye right in the area. Watch the ball carry the fullback and watch Winbush. Uh, we don't have the, the look. He came up just out of the frame, but Winbush number 42, the true freshman, comes up with 4-6 speed, just drives the player. Third and long. Broadwater with a lot of time throws incomplete. Into traffic and behind again, Matt O'Donnell. Number of times today, he and O'Donnell have not been able to intersect. It's been behind Matt in crossing routes. Yeah, they probably don't spend a lot of time in passing drills, as my guess, throughout the course of the year. Not as near as much as a lot of programs do that throw the ball because the, the option offense takes so much time and so much practice. That's where they spend the majority of their efforts. In the decade of the 90s, the Naval Academy has only kicked four field goals of 40 yards or more. This is from 41 into the wind. And it hit the upright. It had plenty of leg. He had crushed the field goal attempt. And yet, it hits the upright. 28 to 7 still in the third. College Football Saturday on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by National Car Rental. So what are you waiting for? Let's go. The home of the United States Naval Academy. At a city so rich in history, uh, today, George O'Leary has a very high vantage point. He's in the crow's nest, a NCAA, a mandating. He will serve a one-game penance, not on the sideline, but in the box for a minor infraction. He got to talk to the team at halftime, and he goes right back to uh, where he uh, started in the first half, and that is pitching the ball to Philip Rogers. On his way to a 100-yard rushing afternoon in Georgia Tech's 99 debut. Darrell Hill on the stop this time, the linebacker for Navy. They look prime, don't they? These co-champions of the Atlantic Coast Conference shared that title. A year ago, and this is Ed Wilder at 255 pounds, all the way down to the 27-yard line. 42 yards by Ed Wilder. Once again, as Ed Wilder goes, that Georgia Tech offense goes, and those two big tackles, watch again, the tackles come down, they lock their men up, and end up controlling the line of scrimmage, and right there, Wilder, it's just an inside zone play. Tackles, guards come off, center comes off, hit the man in front of you, engage him, lock up, and then let the back read it. Wilder doing a great job. Noah King, the center, with the late word to his quarterback in Hamilton. Oh, 
for Peeps. As Hamilton, David Rhino slides down the line of scrimmage, the senior nose tackle, to stop him. That was a career-long run a moment ago for Ed Wilder, uh, the junior from Washington, Georgia. Wilder with a big play, Philip Rogers, two touchdowns. Kerry Watkins, a freshman, has caught a touchdown pass, the first of his career. Joe Hamilton himself has found the end zone. The 28 for the Yellow Jackets. And uh, the clock momentarily halted on the play as if we have a shaken player. And it, it may be the official. The official is uh, the umpire it's being attended to, Rosario Arnado. While we have a moment, we invite you to enjoy Inside High School Sports, premiering on Tuesday, this high school magazine show focusing on the very finest athletes in all the country. At Fox Sports Net, Tuesday, you have to admire the excellence of athletes in this day and age across the spectrum of sports competition. Just uh, months, years removed from competing here, Division One level. It looks that uh, Mr. Amato injured his right leg. He's your umpire, and he's coming off the field. Yeah, the umpire took one. Doesn't look like the knee's real stable there. Hey, you playing the inside? You're, if you're an umpire, you're, you're getting jostled around pretty good on the interior. And I have to tell you, the size of Georgia Tech's offensive line, I wouldn't know if I want to be anywhere close. Now, this requires uh, on the part, uh, Tom, of our officiating crew and our referee, Ronald Cherry, as he is off, the repositioning of the officials. So the blind judge replaces the umpire, but. He is moving, not necessarily where the umpire is, but further downfield. So their alignment shift. Normally, it is a seven-man officiating crew, reduced here to six, this carry by Joe Burns. If you look at the line goes William Booker, he'll be about 15 yards downfield. There is no man now in a striped shirt in the trenches. Back judge, then it's full. You okay, see there, you're, no missing, you're missing that area right there. That's where the umpire usually stands. William Booker at about the eight yard line. The line judge. Third down. Hamilton pitches here. Burns. Oh, go. For the end zone. A flag in. Burns scores a touchdown, and another official goes down on the far side of the field. Burns on the ground. Hopefully, he is all right. Roll down at the 10 yard line. Boy, a physical game involving not only the teams, now the holding call, which will erase the touchdown by Joe Burns. We have lost two officials on this drive for a moment. Holding that time on Tech and Ronald Cherry holding here to tell us about it. the offense. A 10 yard penalty will replay the down. I'm so impressed. Watch Joe Hamilton and how soft his hands are right here. He just flips the ball out. Uh, interesting that I believe they threw the flag late. I believe they threw it late on Des White, who was out there. And what was interesting was Burns was already past Des White. Well, Georgia Tech sporting a five-game winning streak. The end of last year. And well in front here in the third. Now on third and long. Able to on the far side of the field to Joe Burns. Who's a first touchdown. What would have been the first touchdown for Joe this year came off the board. Boy, and right here, all of a sudden, Georgia Tech faces a third and seven. And what do you do? You turn back to your number 14, your playmaker, Joe Hamilton, drops back to pass, very patient, spins the ball out, first down again, plus 15-yard line, and Georgia Tech's knocking on the door once again. Eleven separate Yellow Jackets have handled the football offensively. An indication of the strength of this team. Hamilton inside the 10-yard line and down to the 8, David Rhino. The nose tackle is making a lot of hits in this football game. Yeah, the Navy midshipmen did not 
give up. Any of the academies you play, and especially today, Navy, they're going to get full 60 minutes of effort from this crew. They're not going to they're not going to give way. They may be giving away some poundage up front to Georgia Tech, but they're going to keep coming as hard as possible the entire game. Here come the Yellow Jackets again, fighting to the one-yard line. Cutting it up inside. And that should be good for first and goal for Georgia Tech. Pad level is so key. And you're going to watch again Georgia Tech able to get the push at the line of scrimmage. You see where running backs lowering his shoulder. Lapore, the free safety, once again in on the tackle. And what they're doing, Georgia Tech's able to get onto that second tier and make those linebackers and safeties have to come up and make the tackle. Rodgers driving the pile. A third touchdown. Three touchdowns for Phillip Rogers behind the offensive front. And it's 34-7. Boy, Chris Brown, the left tackle coming off right there. And they get into the backside. Again, 63, Bill Madigan, the right guard, working next to big John Carmen, 6'5", 300-pounder, able to drive his man off the line as well. Luke Manger in his very first football game as an 18-year-old freshman. Rodgers, the veteran, three TDs on opening day. Tenth ranked Georgia Tech, leading Navy 35 to seven. And now Navy looking for some leadership. Perhaps from Terrence Anderson, their offensive captain. Well, big number 62 right there. He's working it. I tell you, it's not easy in the pit. Once again, he's trying to get to that second level each time, but as you said, they're looking for some leadership, Paul. He might be a Rhodes Scholar. He's certainly a leader. Is getting people to do exactly what you think is best for the situation. Um, you're put in a leadership position because uh, by your teammates see, uh, being elected a captain or something like that. You're put in that position by your teammates because they, they trust that you know what's best um, for the team. Uh, and so my, my goal, my objective is to lead the team in the way that I think is best for, for the team. And I have to be the example. I have to get them to follow me. These guys on the team, uh, especially the offensive linemen, they follow me anywhere, and I follow any one of them anywhere. Um, and that's the type of, uh, of brotherhood we built. Uh, the luxury I've had is that there are five senior offensive linemen. There are 29 seniors on this football team. I don't have to do it all. I'm not, I don't have to be the vocal leader. Um, there's plenty of leadership to go around. Wants to be a doctor and took his medical boards a couple of weeks ago, had to miss a scrimmage to do it, and the Naval Academy has said hey, he is a 3.6 scholar. But if accepted, they will let him attend medical school right from Annapolis. Right from here. Become a physician. Boy, something behind him this time. And he said something I truly believe in at the collegiate level. In, in all sports, it transcends. Senior leadership is so important, and guys are elected, you know, by their peers. Another look at the Georgia Tech Buick scoring drive, nine plays, 75 yards, and Tech only taking off 252 off the clock. It allows Navy a lot more time. Again, the big play guy, Rogers, has been all over three of five TDs today. Navy right now elected to call a timeout. Navy has uh, taken the first of its three timeouts here in the second half. We're going to step aside as well in the third quarter. 5.46 remaining. Our umpire, Rosario Amato, uh, you see he has an ice pack on his thigh, which is uh, perhaps good news, shaking up earlier. Not his knee. Back, sitting on the Navy sideline now, and the uh, Naval Academy medical staff, Doc Fair, the head trainer, is sending to him. We're down to uh, reduce to six officials here today, and Brian Broadwater coming off his own end zone, trailing 35-7 late in the third. Lamp 
Shepard keeps his legs going. Out across the 15-yard line. A game break now. Out to Los Angeles and Kevin. Paul, did you know four Big Ten teams playing four teams from the MAC? Penn State taking on Akron and Joe Paterno continues to take the wraps off the offense. 71 yards. Kevin Thompson to Eddie Drummond. The Nittany Lions would add another. They lead 49 to 10. Let's go back to Annapolis. I was concerned. I thought the MAC had joined the uh, Big Ten. They're up to uh, 18 teams. Redwater with a first down carry around the right side. Chris Young. Sophomore strong safety came up. Number 33, a vicious hitter uh, developing pretty darn rapidly. He had to stop there. A game, though, of nine for Brian Broadwater. Boy, this is an interesting statistic right here. Best bowl win percentage is Georgia Tech, 70%. Penn State, Southern Cal, Oklahoma. It's a great list. I asked... George O'Leary yesterday said, you got to be awfully proud of that. I mean, you, you know, host the schools that you have there. Very impressive. And George hasn't lost any bowl games yet. Vereen on the carry. Another first down. He gained 17. Selwyn Scott, a freshman cornerback, starting the very first game of his career. We'll make the stop. Once again, misdirect speed option to the short side of the field. The defense probably overplaying. Ted Roof has his defense overplaying to the wide side of the field. But right there, Navy electing to go short side. Good game. Lambert, running room to midfield. Javaris Tillman at the bottom of the stack. We'll remind you, hardcore football. Monday at 7, ex-Bronco quarterback John Elway, a couple of Super Bowl rings, icing on the uh, phenomenal career of Mr. Elway. He will be on Hardcore Football, coming up Monday, only here on Fox Sportsnet. 1998. There's numbers. Super Bowl. Wrapped up. Out of bounds to Jamar Clark with the hit. Did that draw a flag late on Brittingham? It's a first at the 33. Boy, and uh, I'll tell you, it's interesting about Elway, uh, now that I live in Denver. <laughs> the uh, the most amazing thing about his career, Paul, was that the longevity factor. Playing for so long. The good news is this, so Brian Greasy took over last night and uh, played dirt pretty darn well for their opener against Miami. Right there, Broadwater spinning the ball out. Lengthy, another big gain for the mids. Another 17-yard pickup, and a hole here, Raheem Lambert. First and goal, Navy. A gain of 29. And that is why Navy is always in the top 10 and rushing in the NCAA. Watch it. He'll hit the A-gap right there. Broadwater just hands it off. A quick read. Fullback right up the middle. and just gashes that Georgia Tech Yellow Jacket defense for a big game. They have come 86 yards, his Navy, in the last six plays. Broadwater turned back at the two-yard line. So their level of effort has remained constant, and quite honestly, you have to say that Georgia Tech, with a 35-7 to edge, may have taken a deep breath and uh, relaxed. And you now here Navy's driving toward a second Take score. a deep breath against Navy, and you get hit up under the chin. That's what happens against most opponents. They'll keep coming after you, and execution is the name of their game. That's how they run this option for the optimal performance level. Brian Broadweather yanked back at the one. Now the play designed to follow a lead back into the hole, and in this case, it's that uh, rather small fullback in Marlon Terrell. Number 18 stands 5'8", but he's the first man through trying to get a piece of somebody in front of him. Yeah, it's interesting. Down here, and this is where Georgia Tech's tough. They're tough on the inside of their defense this far. They like to stack up the line of scrimmage. I think if you're Navy, you still want to get outside on the perimeter. Third and goal, Broadwater. No indication yet. He was pushed back. He did not get in. Oh, the referees are saying he did not break the plane. 
I thought he was awfully close. We're going to have a great look here. Again, the Fox cameras right on top of the action. And the young freshman in Greg Gathers. A part of this. Watch the gold helmets for Georgia Tech. Boy, I tell you what, I think he scored right there. Lars Tillman in there, too. Another look. It's fourth and goal. Georgia Tech as the rain begins to fall. But they rise up with a goal line stand. Broadwater gets a block and this time Curley is in. Anchors away for the midshipmen. Just their second touchdown of the afternoon. And here comes the brigade. Some push-ups in the rain. Well, I tell you, it's kind of fun to be back here. I, I grew up with a little anchors away. I want to say, uh, after this extra point, Shubstow into a driving right now with the extra point. Oh, anchors away. I grew up with a little sound of anchors away. My father, I just want to say happy birthday. Happy 80th belated birthday by a couple days to Jim Ramsey, former USS Radford right there. Brian Broadwater going up and over, strike up the band, and here comes the rain. Watch Broadbri Broadwater again, taking it to the perimeter. All of a sudden, he makes a nice cut. Right up and over the top of that Georgia Tech defender. Now, it cannot be raining any harder than it is now. The tropical storm lashing Navy Marine Corps Stadium. Blowing in sheets. This is the first uh, kickoff game of a very eventful weekend on Fox Sports Net. College football Saturday will extend to college football Sunday and college football Monday. Arizona and TCU, Southern Miss and Tulane, a conference USA showdown Labor Day afternoon. And then from Tempe, the Red Raiders from Lubbock and the Sun Devils of Arizona State. Steve Pizziak and Tom Ramsey on the call Monday night. We certainly hope from all of us Fox Sports Net that you and yours enjoy a wonderful Labor Day weekend. Yeah, I think the crowd, uh, I think the crowd that's sitting on the grass is going to start looking for some uh, some protection right there. Again, Navy, you have scoring drive, tells us 11 plays, 90 yards, only 424 again. Broadwater, 51 rushing yards, 89 passing on the day. And again, Raheem Lambert, a couple big runs on that drive and a couple key conversions on third down for Navy. I think what Navy has to do, they, they can easily come back into the game here. They only take a few minutes on any of their scoring drives. And Georgia Tech may have eased up a little bit, as you mentioned, Paul. Well, uh, Navy is uh, given by their chosen profession to performing well in wet conditions. <laughs> And that's what we have today. Now they kick off. Ball on the tee. Tim Schubster will kick it to a drenched Des White. And to Joe Burns. Navy scoring its second touchdown with the onside kick here. And the midshipmen have recovered. the kicker and Shilpska. After the ball traveled 10 yards, it has smiles on the faces of Navy fans. Well, I, I thought I thought Charlie Weatherby and Navy were a little conservative in the first half. That's not to be said in the second half here. Shilpska watching just a little pooch, and the kickoff team gets out in front and lays out some of the people from Georgia Tech trying to recover the ball. Shubston there to recover himself. A great strategy that time by Charlie Weatherby, the young coach from Navy. And right there, all of a sudden, momentum change and Broadwater back at the controls near the 50-yard line. And wanting to throw in the rain and sack back at the 42-yard line. That is a surprise. Uh, into a driving storm when you suddenly have your first true momentum of the afternoon that you would, as the freshman Greg gathers Saxon, you would you would take it upstairs. 
against well, the element. And, and just for that reason, the reason they did take it upstairs really breaks a lot of uh, any tendencies they might have had in running the ball. And you can do that with an experienced quarterback. On the first sack of the afternoon. And uh, the condition of the football is going to become a point of concern for Ronald Cherry, our referee. Have a dry ball for the big mitts of Terrence Anderson at All-American Senior Center. Second down following the loss. And another hole for Raheem Lambert. Lambert inside the 40-yard line. He gains 20. He had a 29-yarder in the previous drive. This time, a 20-yard chunk of the stadium. Right here again, Terrence Anderson creates the hole. The fullback runs through Raheem Lambert. High knee drill right there. He has got both hands on top of the ball. And finally, Chris Young able to drag him down. But once again, Navy driving. On first down. The pass tip. Yeah, Felipe Claybrook. Got his arm up. What do you think, George O'Leary? How's he pacing and reacting to this upstairs in the press box? Of all days to be up there, you got a driving rainstorm, so he stays dry. His defensive coordinator, Ted Roof. See, let's go, let's go. Trying to get him to play hard. Yeah, Ted Roof, the big lead. Really, uh, kind of a chip off the old block, just like George O'Leary, no nonsense type coach. He wants his guys just to execute, do what they're told. Don't come out of your responsibilities that you have as a Georgia Tech defender. You want to stay within your limits, and that's how you play against any option team defensively. Brian Corrin stuffing the uh, belly of the option there in Lambert. Number 90, the junior from Albany, Georgia. And it's third and 11. Great running up just a bit. Broadwater rolls. Throws on the run. Vereen makes the catch. Shy of the first down. The corner and Clark hitting. But the ball's inside the 30 in what is uh, obvious four down territory exactly. for Navy. Exactly. I was going to say, uh, you go for it right here. Although they did not give him a favorable spot, Paul. Well, we go to the fourth quarter. And Navy, obviously, we've just begun to fight. Fox Sports Net College Football Saturday, the opening weekend. The college game from the campus of the Naval Academy in Annapolis and F4 off the USS Enterprise that sits across from Ricketts Hall, the home of Charlie Weatherby's football operation. And in the third quarter, they have sustained offensively. That's big numbers right there. They need four here, though, Tom, on fourth. Hold on to the ball. That's Brittingham in motion. Broadwater, shy of the first down. On the spot, and the defense is held. The ball goes over on down. Defense at time for George O'Leary's troops really rising to the occasion and able to stop Navy. Finally slow that Navy option down. We invite you to join us this evening for a very special college football season preview. Tonight at 6.30 Eastern at 3.30 out on the West Coast on Fox Sports Net. Kevin and Kellen preview the upcoming year. David Rhino on that first down tackle. Uh, for Navy. Now for Georgia Tech, how do you play this with the four and a half minutes to go on what is a very wet field? I probably don't throw the ball a whole lot. I, I, I only do on maybe a bootleg pass. It's a very safe pass in Joe Hamilton's repertoire, but you want to grind it out as much as you can and follow that big offensive line they've been doing all day. Hamilton here. In harm play, but across the 40 to the 41-yard uh, line. And a stop by the linebacker, Ryan Hamilton. So Hamilton tackles Hamilton. Hamilton tackles Hamilton. Now, if you're Tim DeRoyter, Tim DeRoyter, of course, a defensive coordinator. 
aboard the midshipmen, Tim DeRuiter, of course, uh, Southern California product, St. John Bosco High, Long Beach, California. He was a tight end and outside linebacker himself at the academy. It would be the Air Force Academy in that life. But I think if you're Tim DeRuiter, you have to start blitzing on every play. David Doffelmeyer, maybe captain all the way to the uh, far side. Running behind to the right tackle now, and John Carmen. Well, I watch him come off the ball, and he's just going to keep his pad level low. Wraps up two guys, just balls. Well, I tell you, if you're Brad Wimsad, you really don't want to line up against this guy all day long. You know, when he came out, he's the only player out of Maryland on that Georgia Tech roster, so he probably had to get a couple extra tickets for today's game, but he came down to Georgia Tech about 375. He's pushing about 340 right now, but he'll be able to play on Sundays. He's got a great, great feet, great leverage. Second down carry for Hamilton. And the ball comes out, but it's right into the hands of Noah King, the center. Hopped out, spun around, and King made the catch. The senior from Panama City, Florida. You see how excited? You see how excited Noah King was? That might even go down as a carry for Noah King. The ball stripped out. Noah King able to fall on top of it, but you see the hit. They wrap him up, and then they rip the ball out. Daryl Hill, 55. Matt Ray sets up as a blocking back for Hamilton who has time to throw and is unable to complete the pass on the far side of the field of the freshman Terry Watkins. It's a long route to throw, isn't it? Far side covering 20 yards with a wet ball. Far side, but Hamilton that time doing, doing an adequate job getting the ball out on time. Ball was just a little off target. Hamilton now are with the 10 completions, make that 11 on the day, 11 of 16. Just under 100 yards, most of them short. Obviously by those numbers. Here's Joe Burns, rolling down to the 40 yard line. Chris Lepore, up from the secondary on the stop here. The junior from North Olmstead, Ohio. Mike Burns, he is just a sophomore from Thomasville, Georgia, and Florida Panhandle. So if you're Navy, you play every snap as intensely as you can and uh, know that even if you might be overmatched today in the long run over an 11 game season, effort will leave a great job for you. Georgia Tech spreads the field close and they're able to hit it over the middle of the bank and he's gone. Touchdown. 35 goes 35 from Joe Hamilton for six. And a wrinkle to this offense to get Bobby Bowden in Florida State. Another thing to worry about, taking a man like Burns and lining him up out wide. Well, just like you said, Paul, the empty backfield. Joe Burns lined up in the slot that time. Game planning, Ralph Friedgen once again throwing a lot of different formations and looks at the Navy midshipmen. George O'Leary right up there, happy with his troops. He's happy he's standing out of the rain, too, I bet. And the uh, two-kicker platoon. Uh, Cornwell now, as Manje had done earlier, converts the extra point. Burns has scored. Rogers has scored. It's 42-14. Georgia Tech. A frustrating afternoon for Navy at its season opener. Only the first time since 1992 that Navy has opened a year at home. Navy Marine Corps Stadium. They trail 42 to 14. Billy the Goat and company have seen Joe Hamilton throw a couple of touchdown passes. This latest to Joe Bird. The National Football League on the horizon. NFL this morning premieres Sunday, September 12th, just a week away. Comes your way at 11 o'clock Eastern. Chris Myers, Jackie Slater, and Marv Levy, the former Buffalo Bills coach, a part of the team. That is Sunday, September 12th, only on Fox Sports Net. Tom Ramsey, Paul Kennedy, watching Charlie Weatherman and the midshipmen trying to weather this onslaught. Not only do they have the storm, but you have raging yellow jackets. 
as Vereen is sending Tartwheel. Well, I was going to say, too, they have a tough schedule, Paul. When you look down their schedule, Navy pops up once again on Fox Sports with Boston College. Rhino looks like he got, might have got a stinger on that shoulder. That is Randy Rhino's son, then Kelly, covering picks. And again, uh, their Air Force game, they're going to be playing at Redskins Stadium this year, another Fox Sports net coverage. So they get on the network a few times, but I think when you when you do open the season at home, it's, it is a plus. So you just don't want to come out of the gates with a bump on the chin, but Georgia Tech is an awfully good team. O'Donnell in front of a diving Jamara Clark went for the pick and didn't get it. You know what Navy midshipmen call Air Force cadets? Let's shoot on a secret. They call them zoomies. <laughs> zoomies. Is jet zooming overhead? Well, they'll have the zoomies here on Fox Sports Net. They had all they could handle the zoomies last year. Great young men and women, the Brigade of Midshipmen, 4,000 strong in Annapolis. The next graduating class, the class of uh, 00, the Millennium class, the seniors. Rodwider hands inside. Works it up to the 45, and there is Gathers again. What a freshman debut for Georgia Tech's 55 on the stop this time of Lambert. A true freshman from Laplace, Louisiana, right near uh, New Orleans. Is uh, Greg Gathers at 6'3", 255, the tender, tender age of 18. And he's a guy who has great, great quicks off the line of scrimmage. He runs a 4'7", but his pad level, he's able to stay down low. Making some plays today, plus a sack on Broadwater. Rodgers on the tackle this time of Broadwater, who picks up 11 off the option. The other Rodgers in the mix here. And that is a Nick, sophomore from East Point, Georgia. And the brother of Philip, that's the Atlanta suburb, East Point, not too far from that international airport. He overshoots for Does Broadwater. Slipped out of his hand. He's coming over to get a towel. Kelly Weatherby to your left. You see Sammy Steinmark there. Yeah, Sammy Steinmark right here. A new assistant Weatherby. Of course, in the middle of the picture, but Sammy Steinmark, of course, was a, a Zoomy, as you said, Paul. Of course, he was at the Air Force years. Academy for quite a long time. Came over to be the assistant head coach as well, right there. Brother, of course, of one of college football's uh, their legendary figures. Freddie Steinmark, former Texas captain who uh, 30 years ago, 1969 for Darrell Royal, led the Longhorns to the national championship and then passed away from cancer, Freddie Steinmark. And his brother Sammy now joining a Charlie Weatherby in Annapolis. It was interesting, before the game I asked him, I said, hey, you missed the Rocky Mountains? He goes, you know, the Chesapeake Bay is not all bad. Rams, he goes, you like the fish? I said, love the fish. He goes, hey, you got to come out sometime. <laughs> 42 to 14 here in the fourth. And look out, that ball came free. And Georgia Tech has fallen on the football. They stripped Broadwater, the first lost fumble of the afternoon. And there is Greg Gathers, the freshman, in his first varsity game, making it happen. And I think part of the problem with ball security that time is a wet ball. Gathers again, watch how he fights off all the blocks, and then he's able to not only cause the fumble, make the play, but he recovers the fumble as well. A sensational debut for Gathers. This is a big play defense, one that forced turnovers and uh, scored points off turnovers. They had a record nine touchdowns to Georgia Tech out of this defense last year. Some offenses in college football that would be hard-pressed to do that. George Godsey, a sophomore, a new quarterback for Georgia Tech, number 11, takes over for Joe Hamilton, who only enhanced his uh, credentials for national acclaim with this opening day performance. And now the sophomore from Tampa, Ngatsu, hands it off. 
Sean Gregory, a fellow sophomore, with his first carry of the season. Left in Alex Murray on the stuff. So we get our first look into George Godsey, who played in limited fashion a year ago. And trying to get him some snaps and get him ready for the uh, rigors of Atlantic Coast Conference competition. Godsey, of course, having played in six games a year ago for the Ramblin' Wreck, Georgia Tech. Mostly in mop-up duty after Georgia Tech had built a sizable lead and... I think if you're George O'Leary, you want to be able to get that back up as much time as possible when you have as steady of a player as you do in Joe Hamilton. They'll eat some clock here again, Gregory. One of the goals in your right job for that staff at Georgia Tech was to get Gotsi in a position that should Hamilton for any reason not be able to go. George Gotsi could come in and run that offense and they could win that the entire Georgia Tech offense would not collapse. There they are today. What a quartet. In the hive. Rogers, Wilder, Burns, and Hamilton. Late on the exchange. A new quarterback. New cadence. Different for that offensive line. And it's David Schmidgall, the new center in the game, replacing Noah King. Yeah. Have a dead ball. Cross to the snap. Ball stalled on the offense. That's a five-yard penalty. You're playing it down. So substitutions across the board for Georgia Tech here in the fourth quarter, and this game well in hand, 42 to 14. Most that George Gotze played in any one game last year was against Florida State. Joe Hamilton is a four-year starter for Georgia Tech. But as George O'Leary knows, he has not completed a Florida State game in each of his three previous starts against the Seminoles. They have knocked him out of the lineup. And here they put the wood on Gotze and knock him down. It's ruled an incomplete pass. Brad Wimsa, the tackle was coming. By that time, Ronald Cherry, a little quick with the whistle, calling this an incompletion. Gotze just gets drilled. I believe he fumbles this ball right there. I mean, that's just getting hit underneath the chin. and. The ball comes out, although Ronald Cherry, the referee, claiming that Godsey's arm was going forward motion. I think the only reason his arm was going forward is because of the velocity of the hit the he head took. Jocka Martin. <laughs> Shaking up his world. Third down for Godsey. From the gun. Down to the 21-yard line. Headgear on headgear. The tackle. And Daryl Hill made the stop. And it's uh, fourth down. Bring the field goal unit on here, run that offense on a wet field. Leading with nine minutes to go. Yeah, one of the interesting things you said a moment ago, too, Paul, not being able to finish the big game against Florida State. Florida State, three straight will, years, Hamilton's not been able to do that. Florida State will turn up the volume in Tallahassee. And what ends up happening, the speed of that game. I remember watching a couple years ago, Southern Cal and Florida State. Woo! They vary the races. High level. You're right. <laughs> Now the Brigade's band of midshipmen playing off through the raindrops here on Fox Sports Net. Joe Hamilton is done for the day. A triumphant performance on opening day. And now he points his sights on the Florida State Seminoles. Boy, and he does. And the Florida State Seminoles, he hasn't had the best of luck, let's say. Hard running by Sean Gregory. Touchdown, Gregory and Pat. 26 yards for Gregory, his first touchdown of the season. He's primarily a special teams player, but he becomes the third running back to score for the Yellow Jackets today, and the fourth if you include Hamilton. Once again, just that zone outside play missed tackle that time by the mids and Gregory looking like he got shot out of a cannon races into the end zone Pongey the extra point 
Georgia Tech a point shy of 50 in Annapolis. I wonder if he'll put Georgia Tech in that top five. <laughs> nah, he made sure. I think today. he's got the eraser out. <laughs> Seven touchdowns today. Interestingly enough, Des White doesn't have one of them. And uh, Luke Manger to boot it away with eight and a half minutes to play. This will be for Georgia Tech. As he kicks to Marine, it's first win ever in Annapolis, and it's first over Navy. Well, they haven't played every season. They've played rather frequently. First over Navy since 1977. And Jimmy Carter, a Navy grad, was in the White House. And a uh, resident, of course, a proud citizen of Georgia. Hey, President Carter. Hustling got Etheridge on that special team stop. Our National Car Rental Game Summary in this, Joe Hamilton has been everything that George O'Leary and his staff could ask for. And Raheem Lambert, one of the better weapons for Navy. Georgia Tech has done it on the ground this afternoon. Rodgers with three touchdowns. This is Broadwater off the counter option being devoured. They're going to begin to give the uh, backups an opportunity to play. And guys like Matthew Etheridge, who made the special team stop, have the hit here. And there's uh, Ralph, Ralph Friedgen right there with Joe yeah, Hamilton. Lot of baby. That's all hey, hometown, baby. Population 1,000. <laughs> uh, Alvin, South Carolina. Joe needed, he said, 18 tickets to take care of uh, friends from Alvin. Oh, and what does it feel like to win your opener? It, even if you're a decided favorite in the game, there's still a, a pressure release on that, the pressure to perform. Exactly. Uh, you know, what was interesting on the game summary, the, the amount of possessions was not what Ralph Regan had anticipated, speaking to him yesterday, anticipating uh, the, the numbers that he'd get out of today's game. He thought he might get upwards of... 12 to 15 possessions. They've actually had nine possessions, but they've scored on seven of them. So if you get that kind of point production, he's very happy. He goes, hey, Tom, I'll get on the bus, walk away with a big win. Over 400 yards of total offense, too. Well, that's that's pretty impressive. Uh, you know, if you're averaging over 35 a game and, of course, yards, but they'll, they'll have to rise to another road game, of course. Broadwater off play action and under pressure. A diving effort of Travis Williams who slips through his head. Joe Hamilton. And the Hamilton for Heisman promotional campaign began in the summer months. Not only a mouse pad, but a, a, a CD-ROM. So you know what's great? Everyone now, is, now, now is knows that these that's a CD-ROM and that's a mouse pad. Some people might not know exactly. Well, you're technically equipped now, Paul. So you, you're, you're plugged in, as they say. <laughs> Hey, Joe, are we going for it here? Is maybe going for it on fourth down and seven? So still trying to stay in the game. No, they aren't, Joe. They elected to kick it away. Kalish kicks it. Just uh, rolls around at the 34-yard line with six minutes and 53 seconds remaining. Following that 31-yard punt. Georgia Tech will post its seventh consecutive road victory. They haven't lost on the road since 1997. Their longest road winning streak since 1955. Bobby Dodd was the head coach and George Morris, College Football Hall of Famer, an All-American. Georgia Tech, a Georgia practice this week in Atlanta. Very proud yellow jacket along. And he should be the late next player. You know, maybe on first down, that's a freshman, pardon me, done Gordon Klingscales. Two uh, two straight bowl games as well. Including the win and Jacksonville over another day. Well that road that road streak, that road streak might come to a screeching halt next week in Tallahassee. Oh, Florida State sitting down there. No, they're watching this one. Say this, Georgia Tech will arrive in Tallahassee probably with more true confidence that they have had since any time since Florida State has joined this list. Florida State, in joining the Atlantic Coast Conference, raised the bar. 
team speed, quality of play, case in point. NC State goes into Austin, knocks off Texas. You have today Virginia, North Carolina playing. It has become, instead of a basketball conference, and football now can more than hold its own on a national level. And Tech, which won a uh, national championship when this decade began, hopes to contend again this year. So Hamilton saying our goal, to get into the bowl championship series as he begins to uh, challenge every school record in Tech history. Big numbers. He trails Sean Jones on almost every offensive passing category in school history, and he's assaulting the record book like no other. George Gatsby at the helm now. Thanks, Gail. Hard running across midfield. One at a time, baby. We're going to take one game at a time, baby. One game at a time. Now last year, he was able to bring them back. One of the reasons why they won 10 games. And that included one against uh, the Bulldogs from Athens. <laughs> Took the field goal in the final moments. He hit Des White on a 55-yarder. They went in the uh, Notre Dame game. I tell you, he's doing something right. If you can be MVP in two bowl games, not one, but two, Pretty impressive. David Kunda on the stop this time. So George Gatson, his brother Greg, incidentally, went to a service academy. He played at Air Force. Other brother and Gary, a freshman now at Notre Dame. Gatson from Tampa, Jesuit High School, a sophomore. Played only a handful of snaps last year, but he has got to be capable Playing with the first unit and playing well if Georgia Tech is going to contend. He'll have his opportunities during the season. Are running between the tackles now to keep that clock going. So George O'Leary is a trip to the doghouse or the press box. Will still turn out to be a winner. He had to watch, of course, from upstairs. Today and just ahead, college football continues this evening. Colorado State and Colorado from Mile High Stadium. Great, great ball game, Colorado, Colorado State. I think, I think Sonny Lubick's team is, uh, I think they're a surprise team. I think they can come up and, and play pretty tough. Of course, Colorado doesn't have quite the talent on a national scale. As long as their quarterback stays healthy, Mike Machete, they will factor into the national races even towards the end of the season. They're that good. Frank Charrington is going to get his opportunities at running back. This is Russell Matvey, a second straight play. How about H-back in their offense? Light him up at tight end on the wing or in a fullback position. McGee here. The junior from Bellevue, Washington on the stop. That's where a major submarine base is located for the Navy. Bellevue, Washington. I'll tell you what's interesting about Navy. There's so much rich tradition here. At halftime, all of a sudden, we're talking to Steve Belichick, who, of course, is the father of Bill Belichick, Bill Parcell's neighbor and defensive coordinator. And, of course, Bill Belichick, growing up in Annapolis, Maryland. His father, coach of the midshipman for 33 years. I said, when did you retire? He said, 70. I said, why? Because <laughs> I, I had enough. Maybe he's had enough today at Clink Scale. And this uh, offense, Burns, Rogers, Gregory, Wilder, grinding it out, challenging 450 yards of total offense. Awaiting moments. We have been assisted today in the broadcast booth by a midshipman, Mike Harmon from uh, Queens, New York. First classman, our thanks to him. There is George O'Leary. Watched from the booth and seen his team play so well. And he stayed dry. How the Irishman will come down and hit, hit with him. Gleam in his eyes. Playing scales again. While we have a moment, the executive producers of Fox Sports Net are Arthur Smith and Bill Boyson. 
the coordinating producer of College Football Saturday in Los Angeles, Roy Hamilton. This afternoon's game here in Annapolis produced by Tom Hewitt and directed by Ned Tate of Cleveland, Ohio. At our College Football Saturday studio show produced throughout this day by Loy Maxson and directed by Joe Wojtas. Holding on the offense. Ten yards. We play today. Gary Nicholas, Mitch Rubenstein, Brett Smith, our entire team. It has been a pleasure to bring you game one of a brand new season for a team that is going to be a power, it appears, in the Atlantic Coast Conference in Georgia Tech and the midshipmen of Annapolis. Now you always have to ask yourself, is a team worthy of a number 10 ranking in the country? We asked that at the top of the show, and yes, I do indeed believe they're worthy of another top 10 ranking. It'll be interesting to see how they clash next week again on the road against Florida State. But again, when you have a player like Joe Hamilton, and I was so impressed today, Paul, with the rush, the, the running game of Georgia Tech, the rushing jackets, we're going to call them, 341 yards, and still grinding away. Now they've used the infantry against the Navy today. Director of Field Operations at Fox Sports Net is Andrea Jenkins, and we are assisted today by Lenny Van Gilder. Clint Scales has had a bunch of carries. At the end of the game, or Georgia Tech dry off, get on the charter jet, and return to Atlanta as they begin to focus on next week's opponent, Bobby Bowden and Florida State. For Navy, next week they're on the road in Kent, Ohio, before returning home to take on Boston College, a game that will be televised here on Fox Sports Net September 18th. We will talk tonight in this afternoon to Joe Hamilton after this game. What a performance. Might not get the game ball either. Might go to Phillip Rogers or that offensive line. Up front today, they dominated the line of scrimmage. The football game is over and the Irishman can smile. This one goes in the win column. There are 12 ticks remaining and the clock is stopped on a change of possession. So Navy will have to run one more play. A long day for Charlie Weatherby. Incomplete pass. Upfield. Brothers pass intended for John Pay. Incomplete. And the coverage for Georgia Tech number 48. Just ahead, Kevin and Kellen will get you there Second immediately down. following. Of this game. Bring up to date in a moment what is going on in college football. Broadwater's final play of the afternoon. Downfield and caught. And that'll do it. The end of the game. Pass called in as the cut and cannon sounds by John Fay. And Georgia Tech has buzzed past Charlie Weatherby at maybe 49 to 14. Well, Georgia Tech, a lot of firepower, and as you say, their offensive line did a tremendous job dominating at the point of attack, the line of scrimmage, and of course, the two rushers, Phillips and Burns, having big days. The seventh consecutive road win for Georgia Tech as they open up the year, playing like the 10th ranked team in the nation here on Fox Sports Net. This game concluded the first of two on the network this day and a college football preview special which will be hosted by Kevin Frazier and Kellen Winslow. Gentlemen. Thanks a lot.